Hi, I'm Steven. And what am I doing? Today we're going to install a bidet accessory on a toilet. This is the bidet accessory that we're going to install. This particular one was ordered through Amazon and has a relatively simple way to attach it uh, and it should work on most toilets. Before we start putting on the attachment, let's clear away anything that might get moisture on it, like your trash can, toilet paper, and let's make sure we have a clean work surface. And as we begin, let's make sure we have a small bowl, maybe a sponge, and an old work towel in order to clean up any water that uh, might run off from when we empty the tank. Now, as we open the box and take out the contents, you'll find it has the uh, device itself that controls when it's in use and the various parts to help attach it and the all important instruction manual. Let's get that out. Once you have the manual out, usually on the first page, it will tell you all the parts that you should have. So let's spread those out and make sure that we do. So of course we have the device, we have a stainless steel hose, we have the non-slip pads times two, we have the attachment to the toilet, we have the adjustable mounting times two, we have toilet washers times three, Teflon tape, which is this, that'll be very important, and a rubber washer. So we have all of those. And then it tells us that we will need an adjustable wrench and a Phillips screwdriver. Now I will also throw in that you probably need a large flathead screwdriver, uh, depending on the type of uh, how your toilet seat is attached. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. Now step one asks us to remove the toilet seat. And to do this, you will probably need a large Phillips head or a large flathead screwdriver and you may even need a pair of pliers or the adjustable wrench. To remove the toilet seat first we have to get at the bolts. Now depending on your model and how it's attached you may see the bolts readily or you may see these cover plates. If you see the cover plates then you just have to determine which way they open. Usually they'll flip back or they will flip forward and then you'll see the bolt underneath. Now, the bolt itself will either be a large T, in which case it will use a large Phillips head screwdriver, or it will be a single slot, and we'll use a large slot. And underneath is a, a bolt a nut that holds this. So yours may be uh, brass, or they may be nylon plastic, as mine are. Either way, you hold the nut underneath, and you unscrew each to, to get to the uh, toilet seat removed. Okay, underneath you'll see this is where the bolt is that's holding my seat on. Uh, in my case, it is a nylon bolt, as I said. If yours is brass, you may need to use a pair of pliers to hold it. The nylon, in general, is uh, large enough to where you can hold it with your fingers as you unscrew it. As we take the bolts out, it'll be important to keep all the parts handy as we're going to have to put this back. So I thought I would point out this uh, area that goes into the top of the hole over here. Then from the bottom, we have, in my case, a rubber washer that pushes up to the bottom of the tank. There's a nylon washer that pushes onto that one and then the nut that screws on there. So as you take these off, Keep this together and let's set it aside because we're going to need it again later. There are some of you, myself included at times, who are inclined to use power tools. But if you have these nylon bolts, I would suggest that you don't use a power tool on those and use a regular slotted screwdriver, uh, as you may damage these uh, with the speed and the torque of the device. And after you've removed the bolts, the toilet seat will simply 
lift away. In step two, it tells us to turn off the water supply and then to empty the tank. And let's do that. In this step, it first has us turning off the water supply. Now, your hose will go down to a supply behind the toilet at the wall, and it'll look something like this, or uh, you may have a T valve, meaning that it has a, a head that extends on either side. This is a regular ball valve, so I only have to turn it this far to have it turned off. If you have the regular T, then you just screw it to the right until it's tight, and that will turn the water off. If you have the water turned off, we want to remove the tank lid. Be careful, this is ceramic. We don't want to break anything. If you've never had opportunity to look inside your toilet to see how it works, this is a good place to begin. You'll see the handle attaches to a chain, which goes down to a valve in the bottom. This is your water supply. So, and this is a float that moves up and down with the water level in order to turn your water off when it reaches the right level. So we want to flush this and hold the handle down and allow as much water as possible to go down the drain. But you'll see there's still some water in the bottom of the tank. And that's why we have a bowl and a sponge for this next step. In step three, we're going to remove where the existing supply hose connects to the tank. Next step, we're going to disconnect the water supply to the bottom of the toilet. And this is where we need to make sure we have our bowl and our sponge handy because since there's still some water in the tank, when we take this loose, some water is going to drip out and we want to make sure we don't get that spread all over the floor. Now you'll notice that the attachment um, nut to the toilet is not a standard nut. Uh, you may or may not be able to use your uh, adjustable wrench on this. Uh, if not, you can use a pair of pliers. Just don't squeeze it so tight that you break it. And in fact, you might be able to loosen it with just your hand. And as we loosen it, you may start to see some water drip. And that's why we have a bowl. Here's something I probably should have mentioned earlier, but you might need to check first. If you have a rigid pipe, running from the wall to your toilet, in which case adding this T-joint now makes that, that rigid one too long. You may want to take that loose and go get a flexible pipe from your home improvement store. And it'll be important to take the pipe with you because the wall attachments are sometimes different sizes. There's two, maybe three different sizes of the nut that attaches in the wall. The toilet side is always a standard, which is why they have you attaching this on the toilet side, uh, because they're hoping that you don't have to go do that. In step four, we're going to connect the new T-valve they gave us to the tank, and then the supply will connect to this T-valve, and we have to make sure we use the Teflon tape and the washer. In step five, we're going to connect the stainless steel supply tube they gave us to the T-joint that now has the new water supply. Now this next step is where we're going to use our Teflon tape. Now if you've never used this before, it generally comes on a little roll with a little plastic cover over it. Uh, you just push it out and then you'll see it's, it's really just a flat piece of very thin material. And what you do is you put this over the threads of your attachment before you put the nut on to screw it down the pipe nut. And that will make sure it seals that completely. Uh, you only need a couple of rounds on it. You don't need to really pack it on there uh, because there's some variation sometimes in manufacturing and there might be just the slightest little area where water can seep. And so by applying this Teflon tape around it in the direction that you're gonna turn the nut, uh, it will help seal that out. So to do it, we're going to go around in this direction. And as I said, you only need a couple
couple of rounds. And then you pull it and it'll snap off like that and hold real tight. So we'll need it on this thread, on this thread, and on the thread on the bottom of the toilet. Now before we put this on, let's go ahead and put the stainless steel hose on the T of our joint because as we get this screwed on up here, we want to make sure that the hose is moving in the direction we want and that there's not some impediment that would keep the joint from uh, pointing the way we want. Now, before we put the T-joint onto the toilet, let's remind you that they also gave you this rubber washer. And so this goes on the inside with the uh, pointed up, the flat side is down. And then as you put this onto the bottom of the toilet, this will help tighten down inside and then the Teflon tape is in the threads and all of that should keep it watertight. So with the washer in place, we're going to put it up to the bottom of the existing tank and we're going to tighten it down hand tight first before we try to put any wrench action on it. You don't want these to be super tight. If you turn it too far, you'll turn the mechanism on the inside of the tank. So you only want it to be snug tight Something like that. Then we attach the existing supply line to the bottom of our T-joint. Again, we don't want to over tighten this, but we do want it to be nice and snug. So hopefully our Teflon tape and snugging this down will make sure we have a watertight connection. Step six describes how the non-slip pads are added to the bottom of the bidet device and will then help hold it against the toilet when we attach it. So I thought I would point out, you'll notice that there's these little raised ridges on it and that is to fit inside the little notched areas that they have on the bottom. So we just align those the way that they want, give it a little press and it should stay in place. Just like that. Let's do the other one. Step seven has us place the bidet device onto the toilet over the mounting brackets and then use the uh, round brackets that they gave us to rotate it in an attempt to center it on the toilet. Okay, at this point it has us placing the bidet device back over the toilet where the seat is also going to go and we're to put these in and have them turn in such a way that you can see the bolt holes with it centered in the toilet in the direction that you want. Once you have that, then we're going to put the bolts, toilet seat on top, and then we'll put the bolts through and tighten it down. Next, we place the toilet seat back over the new device and attach it using the bolts that we previously removed. Before we put the seat back on, I thought I would point out something that doesn't seem to be covered in the instructions clearly. And that is, remember, it gave us these three items they referred to as toilet washers. Uh, they're not actually washers. I would say they're more like bumpers is the way to think of it. And if you look at the bottom of a toilet seat, you will have at least two. In this particular one, there are four little bumpers on the bottom, and that's to keep a little bit of distance between the ceramic of the bowl and the seat so that it doesn't clamp down really tight. Otherwise, it might pinch your fingers or your butt or whatever. So because this device is going to raise the seat up a little bit, they gave you these additional bumpers that you can glue to the bottom of your seat by removing a little piece of plastic there now there's an adhesive on it and we can put these on in my case since there are only three I would suggest that we do the two in the front and see how we go if we need a third one uh, we'll have to determine a placement that works well but I'm guessing the two in the front will be sufficient and we'll place those just in front of the ones that are already there and glue those down okay before we go any further, uh, you'll notice because my seat has a contour on the bottom, I place the bumpers 
in a direction where they would adhere nicely. Now with our seat in place, we want to make sure that we can see the bolt holes so that we can begin to put the bolts back on to hold the toilet. And again, I will point out that uh, we put these aside for a moment. Uh, this goes on the top part. It fits into the slots there. The rubber washer goes on first from the bottom. The nylon washer pushes the bottom of that, and then the nut goes on above that. And then we're going to hold the slot and hold the bottom, tighten these down. Remember, if you have brass ones, you might need to hold the bottom with a wrench or with a pair of pliers as you tighten the top. Now, before you start tightening the seat bolts down, let's make sure of a few things. One, that it is seated, centered. So if you need to make some adjustments, you can make some adjustments. Also, let's lift the bowl and make sure that the bidet attachment isn't too far forward. And then we can tighten these down. Once you have your bolts back on tight, if yours has the little door devices, you just put those down and they should snap back into place. And that will be that. Also in step nine, we attach the stainless steel supply hose to the bidet device. Now that we're ready to attach our supply line to the bottom of the device, let's first use our Teflon tape as we did before uh, on the threads here before we attach that uh, in order to make sure we try to stave off any leaks. All right, so we're gonna tighten this down and we don't wanna over tighten. Yeah. We're ready to turn on the water supply. But before you do, let's make sure that all connections are tight and that the bidet device itself is in the off position. If everything is tight, you're ready to turn the water on and look for any leaks. Now remember, as the tank is filling, all the pressure is going this direction. So you really have to wait until the tank is full before you know that you have a leak in any of your other joints. There we go. I saw one little drip, so I will make an adjustment. One of the things I would suggest is that you leave your bowl in place for a few hours. Try it out, but leave it in place, and then come back, and if you see that it's had a few drips, you'll know that you'll need to tighten something, so you'll need to see which one of the joints is a little bit loose. Worst case, turn the water off, remove the joint again, put some new Teflon tape on it, and tighten it down. Okay, so now that the item, the bidet is installed, we'll point out this is the water supply, so it's either off or it's on. It doesn't go off by itself, so you have to remember to turn it off. This is when it's in cleaning mode, it says. This is the female direction. This is the buttocks direction. So you would turn this, you turn the water on. When you're clean, you turn it back. You turn this back to the center and you're off. Now, in order to test it, it tells you, of course, that somebody should be sitting on the toilet. But I have Another little trick I'm going to show you. My trick is a little plastic wrap, put it over the top of the seat, and then we'll be able to test it without somebody having to sit there. Now, when applying this wrap, I'm going to suggest that you go all the way around the seat and not just try to cover the top, because if you've never used a buddy before, the, the force could be enough to blow it off if you just lift it on the top. So we're going to put a couple of rounds on here and then we'll test. Something like that. Now, if we put it in the buttocks position, and we begin to turn the water on. We see it spraying, and that's without turning it very far. I mean, it has a lot of, a lot of force. If we turn it the other direction, 
to the female side. Then the other one is deployed. It comes out at a different location. So it looks like it works successfully. At this point, we put the lid back on the tank. We then check for leaks. Remember, leave your bowl in place for a day so that you can check to see if there's any slow leaks that you're not noticing right now. And we're done. Bidet installed. I hope that was helpful. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to see what Steven's doing.